Apollo 11 story, these guys were really putting their neck on the line. <laughs> that takes some guts. I think what I wanted to do with my score was just sort of touch on the sense of danger a little bit and what must have been going through their heads when they were getting suited up. I wanted it to be a little more visceral. I'm Matt Morton. I'm the composer for Apollo 11. Todd and I have been buddies for a really long time. We made Dinosaur 13. It had a brief theatrical run, but it really kind of caught on when it went on TV. It ended up winning an Emmy for Outstanding Science and Technology Programming in 2015. After we won the Emmy for CNN, they approached us looking for kind of, okay, what's your next thing? So we did uh, a short film called The Last Steps which was about Apollo 17, the, the last mission to the moon. And that was very much a dry run for Apollo 11. I, I did that story in the same way, but I let myself use kind of any instrument that came to mind. And there's this juxtaposition between the very modern sounding music and the, the period footage that you're seeing. And that's got its own kind of energy to it. But at the same time, I wondered what it would have been like if I would have uh, stuck to only 1972 instruments. And so when we got a chance to do Apollo 11, I kind of like took a page from that lesson and, and just decided to do a different uh, approach. So my initial vision for it was to try to make it sound like you were hearing musicians from 1969, just like you're seeing the faces of the astronauts and mission control and people watching the launch in 1969. It made me kind of go back to the origins of, okay, where did all this electronic music come from? And it just so happened that kind of the big bang of uh, synthesizers happened right around the time uh, of the Apollo missions. I completely fell head over heels at that point. By the fall of 2017, my sonic vision for the score was coming into focus. It was at that point that I found out about Moog reissuing the 3C, which is this guy. Um, they only made 25 of them. Essentially, I, I just, I fell in love with the instrument and it, it just like totally captivated me. And I just spent hours and hours and hours down here recording all kinds of stuff nobody will ever hear. There's nothing like having the real thing and having, you know, immediate access to all of the parameters in front of you. Like literally I'll be in the middle of experimenting and just grab, uh, grab patch cords and repatch. There's a feel to that. It just, it, it encourages play. There's never really one process. Tons of experimentation and, and just trying to always record. And when I stumble on sounds or ways of configuring the modular, based on what you're hearing or what the way you want to kind of like guide the Ouija board, you know, then you can then make changes to the instrument in real time. It's very time consuming. <laughs> you could do this all in software technically. And a lot of the cues are many layers of patches. There are layers and layers and layers of synths in there underneath the strings and kind of like sweetening them up and stuff. And so I have synth versions of all those different pitches and each of those had to be rendered in real time, synced up with the picture and it's, it's real audio. And it's, you know, I didn't use MIDI notes. I played everything in, in real time. But for me, there's just something totally different about reaching out and being able to touch this thing. So all the synths, I, I'm basically slowly opening the filters on all of them so that we kind of get really big right here. Now the, the last thing that was added to this cue is this string pad. And we wanted to do that because at this point, we knew the trajectory was right. They were on their way home and they got a good burn. Everything looked good. And everybody in the control room was 
clapping. They said, uh, I think Charlie Duke, the Capcom, was like, hallelujah. So you hear this string bed come up, and it's kind of like, everything's going to be all right. I really went out on the limb on this score, and I felt like that would be a cool experiment to just use instruments of the era and then see what a modern guy could do. I'm the only element that's that's modern. Everything else you're seeing and hearing is from back then. So I looked at my music as being able to play the role of kind of bridging the gap between 2019 um, and 1969. Even though I'm using dated instruments, I think it comes off as sort of a bridge to modern people because I'm using modern musical idioms you know, to communicate with you. Just this thing down is, is, is $35,000. <laughs>